I'm Haley. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about dice. Coyote and Crow uses the D12 system for players to understand the capabilities of their characters and the challenges they face. You'll be using just one type of die, a D12, a die with 12 sides with numbers ranging from 1 to 12. A good starting set would be 9 D12s of one color and 3 D12s of another. You can use any two distinct colors that your group likes. If you're having trouble finding physical dice, a dice simulator is available for free through our mobile app. You can find it for Android or iOS by searching for Coyote and Crow. Most of what you do with dice in Coyote and Crow will be called dice checks, or making a check. There's a very specific structure to making a check. You'll often be rolling multiple d12s at once. These groups of dice are called dice pools, even if it's just one dice. Most dice pools are created in Coyote and Crow when a character wants to accomplish something, using their skills, stats, or abilities. For the vast majority of dice pools you create, you'll be rolling standard dice. These are the pink ones in our case. In fact, it's so prevalent to roll standard dice that if a rule or description doesn't mention a color or type of dice explicitly, they are by default standard dice. The number of dice used in a pool is determined by what the character is trying to do. If you are using an ability, simply refer to the details of the specific ability to determine what dice should be used in the pool. The ability will detail which dice, often based on stats, apply to the dice pool. For example, if an ability says to create a dice pool based on the character's spirit and wisdom, and the character has a spirit of 3 and a wisdom of 3, the dice pool would be 6 dice. For skills, you'll use the character's skill rank, plus a related stat and other modifiers such as those given by equipment. Each skill has two related stats. If the character has at least one rank in a skill, then the player uses the higher of the two related stats. If the character has a zero rank in a skill, then they use the lower of the two related stats. If the skill has an asterisk, the character cannot use the skill at rank zero. For example, Key has an intelligence of four and a wisdom of three, and wants to use their computer skill of four to hack and disarm a security system. They add four dice from the computer's skill and four dice from their higher relevant stat intelligence for a dice pool of eight dice. Equipment can either lower success numbers, making your task easier, or add dice, possibly increasing your results. Check the stats on your equipment for details. For stats, you refer to the individual stat and that number is your dice pool. It's important to note that players do not initiate stat checks. Only story guides call for stat checks based on specific circumstances. Success number is what you need to roll on each die in your dice pool for that die to be considered a success. By default, the success number is 8, which means any dice that rolls 8 or higher is considered a success. The story guide will determine your final success number. Most of the time, that number will be between 5 and 11. It can never go below 2. Although it can go above 12, this doesn't happen often, and you can find out how to handle those in the book. In our example, the story guide says the success number to hack and disarm the security system is 9. Now that you have a pool of dice, and you know your success number, let's roll those dice! We'll separate those dice that we just rolled into four categories. Higher or equal to the success number. Remember, ours is 9. Each of these gives you one success, so we have two successes for now. Lower than the success number. These add nothing to your roll, but also don't take anything away. ones, and twelves. Each one you roll is considered a fail and subtracts one success and we have one right now. When a character has at least one legendary rank, you have the option to adjust the value of the die up or down by one for every legendary rank that character has. You can adjust the same die more than once, but you cannot change the value of a fail. If Key has a legendary rank of one, they can choose to use their status to increase eight to nine, increasing it by one. But since their rank is zero, Key skips the legendary status stage altogether. At this point, you might use Focus if you want. Focus represents the character's ability to dial into a task and push away any distractions. You can spend any number of points from Mind to adjust the value of any die that is not a fail. For every point of Mind spent, one die may be adjusted upward or downward by one. You might boost a die to 12 this way, but fails may not be adjusted. Key decides to use Focus to spend one point of mind to change the 8 to a 9. 
For every die showing 12 in the dice pool, you'll gather up an equal number of critical dice. Roll the critical dice pool and add the results back to your original pool. Any number rolled on critical dice below the success number, even a 1, counts as a success. Any critical dice that rolls equal to or higher than the success number is worth two successes. Some gear also have effects, like bleeding or poison that gets activated. If you roll more 12s with your critical dice, you'll create a new critical dice pool, with one critical die for every 12 that you roll. Key has a 12, so they have a critical dice pool of 1. They rolled an 11. We'll add that to their pool. Now, all you need to do is add them all up. Add 1 for every success and 2 for every success on a critical dice. Key has 4 standard successes and 1 critical success, for a total of 6 successes. Subtract 1 for every fail. For Key, that's 1 fail. The rest of the dice don't do anything. In the end, if you have 1 or more successes, it's a success, and your character has achieved what they set out to do. Subtracting one fail from the six successes leaves Key with five successes in hacking and disarming the security system with their computer's skill. Sometimes, the story guide will provide a specific number of successes needed to accomplish something fully in a single round. In the case of combat, one success is equal to one point of damage. It might take multiple rounds and many successes to take down a tough adversary. If you have exactly zero successes, it's a failure. Your character didn't make any progress, but there's no harm done. Generally, you can try the same thing again in the following round, so long as the situation's the same. If you have less than zero successes, it's a critical failure. Not only has the character failed in their attempted action, they've made things worse for themselves in some way. The story guide will determine what the result is. It could be anything from dropping your weapon, running out of ammunition, or even shooting your friend in the foot. It might also end up that you've ruined your chances to attempt the same thing again. For the computer skill, Key might be entirely locked out of a computer system. That's it! Thanks for joining us! Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. See you next time!